Okay. Let's see. I was going to pick trouble. Okay. So I go up here and oh, let's go. With, uh, I was doing a lot of searches. So save photos. So uh, Hilbert curves. Okay. There's a Hilbert curve. It's a space filling curve. Because I could wake some people up doing this. Um, when you take computer science and you take computer graphics, one of the things they do is they they have you write a program that makes these things, and what these are called are Hilbert curves. And what they are, they're a, a space filling curve. It's a curve. The reason why I call it a curve is because it's just one line. As you can see, each one of these is just one line. But it's the same algorithm each time. It's just various iterations of the same algorithm. It's like you have, uh, if you know about for loops, uh, for loop lets you go, go over several iterations of the same set of instructions. And in this case, this was probably produced either with just a regular program, or it could have been done with Logo, an old program that they use, uh, an old language they used to teach kids how to program with. And uh, I need to shut a door here and it won't shut. Uh, someone keeps putting the hat on the doorknob that makes it impossible to shut the door. Okay, and so it's a. Oh, and I got another door I need to shut too. Okay, and so what I wanted to get out of it, what I wanted to do this talk for was just to kind of. Just give people pictures. This is programs called Pictrove, and uh, it's great application for if you need to do. And it's on the iPad, and it's great application for if you want to just go around and surf the net for pictures. And it's got an option in there that you can do a Yandex image search, which is really nice because if you want to, if you get a low resolution version of an image, you can get a high resolution version of the image just by going down to the bottom. And you'll see this, and I'll click on this little button down here, and it says, yeah, Yandex similar images. If I click that, then it'll show all the similar images to that, and then you can go and look, in, and it just figures out kind of other images that it can come up with. And uh, so th things like that. And so the, these all describe Hilbert curves. But I did that just by doing a search on an image that had a Hilbert curve in it. You see? So you go up to the very top. I can do some other searches. Like I had various, let me see, save search searches. These were searches that I was doing to try to get some information. This is a lung. So I said fractals in lungs. Because a fractal is, is kind of like a Hilbert curve. And what they say about lungs is that the surface area of the lungs is equivalent to the surface area of a tennis court. And one other thing that I'm trying to suggest to people, is probably the best place for people to, to uh, go and quarantine themselves for this virus is, is in the wilderness because the wilderness is filled up uh, with, let's see, okay, that's that. But the wilderness, when you go out into nature, hold on one second, it's going to take it a while to load this image. Wow, this is a huge image. Look at that. Okay, so here we got a really very, very large image, I guess. And it's got a lot of detail on here. And you can see there, if you look at the trees, it looks kind of like a space filling curve. It's called a, you know, people call these fractals, you know, because at a very small level, the, um, the organisms are following a sort of a pattern of how to, how to make things. And the way it does that is, can, is, can be, uh, created with math. And so there are mathematical functions that will produce things that look like trees just by kind of being inspired by how the organisms that make trees make trees into that form. And so you've got trees in your lungs, that those are trees in your lungs, and the whole purpose of this, the trees like that and the trees in your lungs, is that you, it, it makes it really easy to control 
a, a large surface area and pack it into a small place so you can have a, a wide amount. Uh, so the thing is, is that <clears throat> the reason why your lungs have the surface area of a tennis court is because that's probably what you need to bring in as much oxygen that your body needs. So everybody's body has got all of this surface area, all this really tight knit stuff inside of it. And um, the reason why it's that way is so that you can get a lot of stuff into a small package. So each human is like a, is like a huge number of surface area, uh, a, 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 a wide surface area of lots of, you know, and it says, it's like each person that you come in contact with um, has like a whole bunch of little uh, nuances and crevices and places where where things like viruses could hide. So um, the thing is, is that in order to control this virus, we need to um, we need to do social distancing. And part of that is to avoid the possibility that one person can take in any of this virus, and that virus can hide anywhere in the surface areas in this wide surface area that's inside of each person's body. And it can spread inside of the body, but it has to spread across all that surface area. And so, um, but in the real world, if you were to, um, if you were to quarantine yourself in a man-made environment, um, man-made environments don't have the, don't have the, um, beauty, the fractal beauty of nature. And so nature's got way more surface area in it than that city does over these these trees. This entire, you know, forest here, um, may it you know for for example, if you go to New York, um, you've got the Central Park, and then you got all the buildings around it, and you think, oh, this Central Park is it's not so big, you know, it's got some trees in it, and look at all these buildings around here. The buildings are massive. The difference between that is Central Park's probably got way more surface area than the entire city does. And the reason why that is is because of all of that all of that um, fractal nature, the nature of the fractals. And so the 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 thing to be learned here is that probably the best way that people can quarantine themselves is to go out into nature. And but um, the worst place you can be is it can be in cities like New York which store people really well, um, but the surface areas inside of these buildings are flat and they're man-made and they don't have, they don't have a whole lot of fractal nature to them. So the surfaces are, um, could, could carry lots of viruses probably, but there is, I guess there's, probably probably a good reason for that to put the viruses in inside of rooms or to get people to quarantine themselves in rooms is that it's probably easier to get rid of the virus if it um, is on the surface of a plane but um, it's questionable if the I mean I would have the CDC think about this is um, um, which is better to be in a room with flat surfaces and particles that could just go, you know, and I, I came up with an image. Let me bring up that image if I can find it in my collection here. So we go to my saved photos. And I found a diagram here. Let me see if I can locate it. This is, I just went through and I just saved a whole bunch of these, a whole bunch of images. And I found somewhere in here an image. And it what it does is it shows you different sizes of particles and uh let me see if i can find it i thought i saved it oh and you know what it's probably not here it's probably in my images so let me see uh, i probably got something that, oh yeah i got a picture of uh who is that that's it's, uh yeah i got a picture of her in there but it may be in here hmm no, it's on there, is it? Okay. So I'll, I'll go back to the the other thing and see if I can find this. 
what it was, it was, it was a diagram that showed um, various sorts of sizes of particles. And um, it's got to be somewhere in here. I'm just not looking finely enough at, at the details of what's in here. I thought I saved it. I must not have. Okay. So anyhow, the... Um, these are all diagrams of, I'll just run through these diagrams and maybe it will happen upon it. So Hilbert diagrams, um, various sorts of diagrams here. I'll, I'll run them. You know what? I could probably put this in, um, that's a good idea. I'll put it in slideshow mode and it'll just run through each one of these. And if you want, you can copy it using your screen capture. Ooh, kind of cool. It's got some interesting little transitions there. And uh, so you can use your screen capture and then you can use a pro program like Pictrove to um, to do the, to do, um, oh, that's cute. Uh, you could use a program like Pictrove to take the images and then find the associated materials. Probably be a really good way of getting information across to people and then to do uh, picture exploration. So this is the, this is like all the transitions in Pictro for doing image transitions. Pretty cool. So that's, uh, that's like another space filling curve. That's another space filling, that's called a, um, I forgot what they call those. And then this was, this is probably a program that somebody had that let you mess with uh, fractals make your own fractals and this is fractals in nature I mean, you might see something like this on a on a head of cauliflower you know or that's um it's like a plant some succulent type plant or a cactus and then like a fern a fractal in a fern but the idea behind that is is it's uh, it's to increase the surface area um, but to keep it in control, that's the reason why it's got a root. It's got a root so it can keep it keep in control of the stuff that's in that surface area. That's the way that plants collect um, collect sunlight, uh, co collect the necessary things to do their um, photosynthesis, and um, so they're taking energy from the sun and using it to um, put into their into their uh, biological processes and to collect that it's so the leaves um, are to increase the surface area that they can cover but it's to do it with less resources so rather than creating a big solid um, uh, and the other thing is is that if you do it that way then you can have a lot of overlapping plants and each plant can be collecting any whatever sunlight the other plant didn't get, you know, because they got a little bit of translucency to them. So to have a lot of plants with a lot of those little leaves and stuff, you can have them tightly packed in in an area of a of a um, forest. And the thing is, is that. Um, purpose of all this is is to make it so that you can stick a lot of stuff in a small spot and uh, it would make it probably a better environment for capturing virus and and disposing of it because um, the virus I had heard that it virus won't last very long in a wet environment which is perfect for you know outside but why stay inside of your room um, and it's the virus is going to collect on the surfaces of the walls. You can, it's probably a lot easier to clean those walls, but um, but it also makes it easier for it to um, to get spread. You know, because all you have to do is wipe the wall, and now it's on your clothes. You know, but uh, it's harder to wipe a virus off from something like a tree. You know, you um, you cough on the tree, but how do you get like what's on the tree onto the surface of your clothes, it's going to be much more difficult. And there's a lot of little surfaces, you know, subsurfaces of the tree in the bark where the particles can collect. 
and so it would make it much harder for it to get back on the surface of your get on the surface of your clothes once it's on nature and so that would actually decrease your chances of actually getting the virus if somebody coughed in in a forest um the chances of you getting that 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 viral particles the particles in the virus is going to be much more less likely than if you were in a room and they coughed and this is the reason why i'm suggesting people probably go out into nature you know your your natural nature's natural the virus is natural the buildings are not and the buildings don't have a whole lot of subsurface to them they don't they don't have a have the nature of having um something like a hilbert curve in them you know maybe they could be designed that way to have have um walls have be porous and have lots of little intricacies to them maybe that's true of walls that are made of calcium calcium deposits or something you know and so this is like showing the vesicles the the blood vesicles that go into a lung cavity and uh so I just really just all I did is I just had a field day inside of um, inside of Pictrobe going around doing searches for various sorts of things and it was just revealing to me like all the little images and if I found an image that looked interesting and I wanted to find one like it I just say go and do a Yandex search on that and it would find me something similar and it's really funny because sometimes it would show you stuff that had nothing to do with what it was you were looking for. It was just stuff that looked like something else, you know. So it can be quite fun um, to do that. So. And probably if you went through every single one of these images and then did searches on these things, you'd probably learn enough about biology to probably start working on how to fix this problem you know with the virus which methods you might come up with somebody who even knows a lot of this stuff might get reminded of that stuff just by looking at pictures you know because pictures are worth a thousand words and even when the words are on the on the picture that's just um an added benefit is that you can put both pictures and words into pictures and in videos you can stick tons of pictures and then you can just sit here and do um, do a screen capture and sit there and talk over the pictures and you don't necessarily have to make the pictures yourself somebody out there has already made the pictures so all you're just having to do is um, all you're having to do is use the the stuff they got you know The other thing about being out in nature whenever you're quarantining is there's a lot of places the kids can go and look. Okay, this is the, what I was looking for. This is the um, picture I was looking for. And you see it says particles settling in air, still air, time to settle five feet by unit density of the spheres. And so a really small particle, 41 hours probably to settle, uh, 5.8 seconds for something that's um, uh, 100 nanometers. Um, 100 nanometer particle takes 5.8 seconds to settle a 0.5 nanometer um, particle takes 41 hours so um, so the thing is is that depending on the size of the particle it's a um, small particle to take a longer time to settle than for big particles to settle you know so that was the reason why that was what I was searching for was 
that diagram just to give people. And uh, so I was looking up diagrams for, you know, some people don't, it's amazing how many, how much things people don't know probably got in school but probably ignored it you know because you know how people go through high school that's basically just trying it's just information avoidance most of the time you're in high school it isn't until you get into college that you actually learn something so people once they get through high school think they've got enough to get by and for some that's true for that that's true for people who were receptive during the time they were in high school the people who weren't receptive during the time they were in high school, that isn't enough. And they probably need to go back through high school and then go to college or just, you know, find some other way of, um, of collecting the information. Another way is just to, it's just to stay online, get into forums, just filter feed information. Um, that's almost the same thing. Um, there, there are good teachers that can take, lots of intricate information and put it in a format makes it easier to understand uh, then there are the teachers that try to do that and it doesn't come out right and it in some cases it requires a student has has a little more information that can decode what the what these what the teachers giving them um, and they can learn easier from that than somebody who lacks information where the teacher is not willing to go to to go down to the level of the student that doesn't have the requirements to to understand things some teachers are willing to go low and high some are only like to be at a high level and they don't want to go bestow the, uh, themselves down to a low level to to get to the level of students that might not have enough education um, the reason why we teach in layers of over time is so that um, people can become come in contact with the basic information the language by which to um, to discuss things further on so first it's just like with children you learn how to um, you learn how to recognize shapes and colors and how to tell the difference between different sets of shapes and patterns then you work upward to learning letters and then from letters you learn how to form words and then from words you learn how to form sentences and you learn how to extract meaning from sentences uh, you, you learn meanings from words meanings from sentences and then from sentences you go to stories and then from stories you go to learning subjects that use stories you know so it all at all levels of education the reason why they're organized in the way that they are is so that um, people of at any level can come in and start learning kind of wherever it is that they can understand you know if somebody already knows how to to um, if they already know English but they don't know how to write it then you have to go through the process of showing them how to turn the the stuff that they know the sounds into words and then the words into letters and um or you know just try to disintegrate the information and then reintegrate it so that they can understand how to write and read and do things like that because they already know what the words mean they just don't know what they look like on the surface of paper you know and if you if you found learning music to be rather difficult because you have to do sheet reading. You can probably understand what it's like for somebody who is um, who is illiterate. Is that um, they're trying to turn sound or they're trying to turn meaning into uh, something that's written on paper, which could probably just be about as complex as me trying to learn how to read sheet music. You know, which is actually a little more complex because sheet music it's not only the information that you're reading but you're reading it and putting it to time to try to figure out how to play music you know and so it's a bit more complex but it's the same sort of idea that you know when you learn things from a ch as a child and work your way up to learning how to read it's going to be a lot easier that way because you're you're 
um, you're open to it. You're you're respond. You will respond well to it as a child, because children lack the capacity to control the universe around them, and literacy is the way to control their universe to 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 find out where to go and what to do and how to um, how to navigate their way through the universe. And um, someone who is illiterate, they don't have that capacity. They have the size and the ability but the thing that really makes it hard for them is is that they they have to hide it from people that they they don't know and um you can imagine just how difficult that is when somebody has the expectations of looking at somebody who's an adult but then not knowing that they're illiterate and then if you find they're illiterate then the the tendency for adults is to laugh at them because they're are you know and that's the fear that the the adults who have illiteracy uh run into is having to deal with that so it's um it takes people who are more um who who are more sympathetic to teach people um who have illiteracy how to read and and, and it you have to understand the difficulty is much different than um, for somebody who who doesn't know how to read who's an adult it, it's got to be more difficult for them to learn how to read than it is for children to learn how to read because with children you're working with an empty slate and um, you can work your way up whereas with an adult um, they already know the language um, you have to figure out some way to turn to associate the language that they know with the language on paper that they don't know and how to turn those sounds that they know about into letter combinations you know and I'm sure it's got to be more difficult but you know I, I don't know I've, I've never taught somebody how to do it but I can imagine you know it, you just if you if you understand things um, in detail you come to the realization that things are not as easy as they seem that um it's like hindsight's 2020 you know you can look in the past and you can say well it should be really, really easy but um someone who's looking to the future is a lot harder because they they see obstacles they don't see pathways you know when on when you look back on the past you see the pathways you don't you you forget about the obstacles and so it's the obstacles that make it very difficult to to go from from somewhat from a place where you don't know to some place where you do know you can see the pathways you can't see i mean you can you don't run into the obstacles because the obstacles once you overcome them you can you can avoid them and so you see the pathways more easily whereas somebody who can't under can't recognize the obstacles won't be able to see you know so this is art um this art inspired some people to make 3d computer graphics of organisms this is an obviously somebody who's into uh, microbiology that um had uh had a need to try to express things that were in his head in the form of art to kind of just show the beauty of of um, these little worlds that exist within everybody you know and they're space filling worlds they're they're highly they've got so much surface area so much detail and uh, so the, the thing is is that that and there's one that uh, everybody will recognize that isn't a organism it's it's a it's a yeah it, you probably recognize that it was the lead singer of the doors I'm trying to remember his name um but i was trying to look around to see if somebody had done one for elvis i was looking around to see if somebody had made a picture of elvis in a petri dish um that would have been cool and somebody would say this is the elvis elvisium uh organism or something I'm I'm wondering if somebody's going to come around to cr to create an organism and then naming it after Elvis, you know, and so that people end up talking about Elvis and 
in uh, in microbiology circles, you know. And we could just take some of our popular musical heroes and put them in, put their names into various, rather than our own names, put their names in there. And so then you end up, it ends up being something fun to talk about when you're talking about biology. You, It probably would be very distracting too, but then... Um, you need some distraction in all of this stressful environment. So maybe giving names to biology um, through musicians would give you something to to do later. You know, whenever you're trying to you're trying to relax from all this stuff, you can start pondering something that's um, has nothing to do with it, but might share the same name. And so you know. You get to listen to music by Elvis later in the day, and then you know. I mean, in the early in the day, you're you're working on fixing the virus, and then you got some names in there that you're working with, like Elvis. And then you feel compelled later on in the day to party and drink, and uh, listen to Elvis music. So, so this is um, this is people camping, and when people think of camping, they think of tents. Well. You can camp with vehicles, so why not use vehicles? And so that was like the last image I came up with. And so I would suggest people, you know, probably the best way of quarantining yourself is to go out in nature and camp. And everybody says, well, nobody knows how to camp. I said, it's easy, dude. You get in your car, you go to some place where there's a camping place, you park your car, you sit in your car, you open up a can of beans. You eat the beans. You open up your cell phone. You you uh, connect to the local cell phone tower. You connect with your friends. You're in your car. You're camping. You're in your car. You're camping. If you want to do it in a tent, that's another form of camping. But camping can be anything where you're that causes you to go somewhere out where there's no houses and there's just nature but you can do it in your vehicle. You know, that was what caused a lot of people in the like 1940s and what, you know, 1930s that started getting, or 1950s or whatever, they started, they started saying, hey, we need to go out and travel somewhere. We don't have the money to do it. I mean, we don't have the money to go to some far off nation, but we can go across America, you know, and back then gas was cheap. And so, you know, you just fill up your car and then go across to various sorts of town, you know, have an outing where you're just basically going across roads. Um, the only problem with that is, is that if everybody goes out and camps, then the, then the, uh, the roads are going to be cluttered with cars. And so it probably is the case that, um, I don't know how many people are camping, but I would say that rat, probably the best thing to do in this Thing is to see how um, the government could take large sections of land that are being that are not currently being used for farming um, places where there's just like a lot of vegetation maybe but there's nobody occupying it and then just put just let people camp there quarantine there and then have various sorts of um, people that have food and whatnot go through these camps and distribute the food, you know, sell the food or distribute it however it means fit and uh, allow people in there that are homeless to also exist in those camps. And that would actually be a way of the homeless um, maybe even becoming useful in, um, in trying to do maintenance of the camp, um, possibly even finding people that already have the monies to to um, create companies, they might actually find their future employees in those camps that are just homeless. So the thing is, is to get regular people to go out and camp because um, for the greater surface area of nature, um, the particles are going to have a harder time rubbing off on people. It's going to be a lot easier for those particles to get um, embedded in the nature and um, it will make it harder for the wind to blow them up and throw them back out at everybody as they would in a closed room with flat surfaces. So the, the thing is, is that you're out in nature and you may come in contact with people 
who are homeless. You might come to understand that homeless don't steal stuff and that they are pretty hardy and good people. A good number of them are. In fact, most people are good, um, but because we all have the ability to empathize and um, this part of our makeup is the ability to empathize. And if, and just by going out in nature and seeing just the complexity that is in nature, you come to understand that you're, you've got complexity and, but we've, we're basically all alike, just as the cells can replicate themselves, the DNA so uniquely, we're well designed, we're well created. Um, there's a whole world out there that doesn't want us to know that. They want to erase that from us. They want to make it, uh, make us look, they want to water us down. They want to simplify us, you know. They want to eliminate, uh, you know, people are afraid of communism. Um, the, the thing that communism, what makes communism communism is the removal of information. To, to try to control dissent, to keep people from having enough information to, to um, make them easily controllable. When you can control people, uh, it's much easier if they don't know anything. And so the idea is, is to remove their education, to remove their public schools. And, you know, that this, you know, capitalism talks about, you know, not putting a whole lot of stuff into schools, not ways wasting a whole lot of money on taxes and things like that. But you need those school systems in place so that you, those people have the power of knowledge and information to form companies and things. But there are people out there that talk about removing taxes. And when they were talking about removing taxes, they're talking about removing public schools. And um, the public schools are there. They, they have a process by which to get information into people. And if people don't have that information, they become kind of simple. And when they're simple, they um, don't have the capacity to actually control the world around them. It becomes very frustrating. And um, knowledge is power. Truth helps. Truth hurts. Um, lies are, are um, feel good. And... It's easy to lie to people that don't have a capacity to understand um, truth or to understand complexity. Um, and that's what education gets you is the ability to understand complex ideas. And so you need, you need education. You need to be able to teach people um, the intricacies of things. Um, but you need to do it in some way that um, is still relevant to them. That, uh, so you have to put it in a form of relevance, why they need to learn about nature. And the thing is, is that you need to allow people to have all the ideas at their fingertips, even if it is from a religion such as Christian religion. A Christian religion is only a, a religion whenever you try to take the ideas that are in the Bible and use it to explain the unknown because a religion of beliefs what beliefs are about is filling that space of the unknown that people can become fearful of and some people fill it with um they fill it with um superstition india is full of people who have filled that spot with superstition and so they'll worship a god um because they feel that God has control over a particular part of their world that they're unfamiliar with or that they fear and they have no control over. So it's much easier to worship a God and feel you have some kind of control over it through worshiping the God because otherwise it would be very stressful to not have any control. And it's the reason why um, people end up worshiping things is because um, they, they feel that by worshiping them, they... Um, they can gain some control over their universe. Uh, some people do it in the form of, you know, if I only had that car, I could get the girls. That's a kind of worship. If I could only, if I could only, um, if I could only understand what the artists understand, I could unlock the meanings inside of the, there's a song called, uh, uh, by the Crash Test Dummies that says, if I'm, if I, um, uh, if I get to know the artist, maybe I could, 
um, understand the paintings, you know, because there's some sometimes what attracts uh, men to women is not so much the beauty, but their ability to understand art. And the men don't understand art or vice versa, you know, a woman being attracted to a man who understands art, you know. And so, so being attracted, even education could be something that makes you attractive. So knowing something, uh, whereas um, people that are beautiful don't usually get to know a whole lot of stuff because people don't bring them in contact with information, things that would be more interesting to them than just the way something looks, you know. And so it, it brings people in contact and um, education is important and it's an, and it's important to recognize what it is um, that we fear about the world, and um, and to understand that it takes many different forms, and so people that that uh, vilify communism um, in the capitalist terms, they probably don't understand that um, when they're trying to do saving face or they're trying to say, well, we need to cut down on unions. What you're really doing is you're saying uh, people should not have the power to do anything and the next one will come is removing all informational resources from them, removing their schools, removing their capacity to actually be um, capable of being better workers. Um, that all comes with controlling uh, dissent and that's capital. That's uh, that's communism, and if you're doing that inside of a corporation, that's communism. It's just that you think because it's a corporation and that they're making money, that because they're making money, they're not communists. No, they are because they're controlling the information. They're trying to, they're trying to, um, they're trying to save face. They're using the people around them. And they're managing them intricately, and they're keeping them from communicating with anybody who might be might put the co company in harm's way. That's communism. That's the way communism works. And that's the reason, probably the reason why it's so easy for communist China to incorporate capitalism is because um, there is a lot of capitalism now that resembles a little bit of communism. And the only, the, the thing that's the major difference between them is usually communism is applied to, to governments but um, you can do communism inside of corporations. Any large organization, you can create that kind of effect. The Catholic Church and, uh, and, and England, uh, the English government and the Catholic Church mixed together, and they, what they would use is they would use people's fear of the unknown uh, and put that into the Catholicism. And but because of the way Catholicism works, you, they, it works in hierarchies, um, it, it can be politically in, controlled the way a government is. And then the government or the aristocracy can come in to that church and, and dictate to all, of the, to all of the religious clergy on what they need from the people um, and, and use the religion as a method of leveraging the people to do stuff. Um, but the thing is, is that they probably didn't have the capacity to teach the people um, stuff. The people were compelled to, 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 to know about the religion because they needed to have control over their environment. And when you don't, and when you don't have an education, um, a religion is going to be pretty effective because um, there are people that don't have a time to go around and teach every one of the peons things. And the other thing is, is that Back in those days, people had a very limited lifespan. They didn't last very long. You you got to about 30 and you probably died. So teaching people didn't really make much sense, probably. Uh, it probably only mattered for like the first seven or eight years. And then after that, um, the rest of the time is time that that would be better spent doing something else. So it probably took, as a result of us getting more educated, helped us to eliminate disease and live longer longer period of time permitted us to to incorporate and assimilate more information uh, and as time goes on I have a feeling that 
um, as the more complex we get, the longer our schooling is going to last. We're going to have to come up with different forms of schooling that um, are more centric on, on areas that matter in the world that probably are not going to get taken over by AI. Because we're going to be using AI like the, we use tools. We're going to be using, and AI is modeled after us. It's modeled after the way our neurons work in our head. And so we need to apply a certain amount of ethics to AI. If there is a singularity ever occurs, if it ever does occur, and that's when AI gets to the point to where it's as complex as a human, um, then we need to, we need to, um, we need to be very careful with that, you know. So anyhow, but that's what we need to do in this quarantine is get out into nature, learn something about biology, may, let the kids give kids some amount of control over their environment, you know, uh, over their, over, that's what education is, is the capacity to have control. And um, children long for it because, and that's the reason why they're drawn into Minecraft is because it is a, a world that they can control. And so when you give them a little world to control, even whenever it doesn't control your universe, um, it gives them something to escape into. So...